and welcome to this exciting tutorial. We're going to be going further with our science fiction scene. Today we're going to be looking at refining our materials a little more and getting our objects positioned and getting the displacement modifiers working really well to give us lots of variation in all of our rocks. So let's get started. <laughs> We left off last time and uh, we've got our model set up and uh, we render it out. This is what our uh, texture was starting to, to look like. Now today what we're going to do is take things a little bit further. We're going to add a little bit more to our material just to kind of give it a bit more life because as we start to increase these objects and put them in the scene, some of our patterns and stuff that we're using are going to feel a bit repetitive. So we just need to break things up a little bit further and, uh, and, and begin to then place all of our different objects in the scene. Now in order to do that well, we need to also look at refining our modifiers on our rock spire so that the position and the shape of our rock changes as we move it through the scene. Um, we're also going to work a little bit on improving the displacement modifiers that we're using to create the rocky shape itself. So hopefully by the end of this tutorial, we'll have the material wrapped up and we'll have our scene laid out in a general way. All right, so let's get started. First off, I want to uh, I want to work a little bit on the displacement on our rock spire before we jump back into materials. Okay, so I'm going to increase the size of my viewport here. There it is, and I'll leave this up. It's fine. I don't have to get rid of that. And I'm going to select my object. Now I've got everything turned off because last time we were just trying to focus on our rendered view. So I'll just turn everything back on all of our widgets and things, and we'll select our rock spire, and we're going to jump over into our Modifier stack. Now these are all the things we remember that we were using to create this shape. And I just want to make a few tweaks to start to uh, bring things out a little bit better. Um, so first off, if you see, if I grab the rock spire and I hit G and grab, um, oh sorry, I need to grab our, our nulls that are um, affecting things with the, uh, what is it, which modifier is that? It's the, um, the warp modifier, remember is using our little nulls. So if I grab it and move it around, you can see it stays exactly the same. The geometry is not changing, which is great, you know, if we needed that to happen. But one of the things we're trying to do in our scene is to create a lot of these and position them all over the place. And so to do that well, we really want to be able to speed up the process of making these rocks look unique. So we're going to use the position of the rock in the global space in the world here to affect the shape. So let's uh, let's open up our displacement modifiers. So remember, there's two of them. And with the first one, we're going to change texture coordinate from local to global. I think see things start to change already. And we're going to do that here as well, local to global. Now, if you notice, we've got all these selected still. So if I hit G, as I move it, it's going to really change a lot. So this is going to help us as we position all of our rock spires in the scene. They're going to automatically change their shapes. So it's going to look like our rocks are unique which is going to be really helpful. Now I want to refine this look. So you see it's starting to get a bit messy. And I guess, you know, sometimes when you find a good look for something, if you're using local coordinates, it kind of means you found like a sweet spot in the modifier, in the, um, sorry, a sweet spot in the, the uh, noise generator that you're using to create the shape, you know, where everything just kind of lines up perfectly to get something that looks good. But as soon as you move it around or change the position of that, um, that gradient or that, that noise texture that you're using, things start to fall apart. So we want to find something that's a bit more consistent so that as we move it around the scene, we're not going to end up with um, a lot of scenarios where our geometry just doesn't look very good. Okay, so um, let's, uh, let's do that by jumping into our texture. Now remember, this is the texture that everything's using. So if we go back to our, to our modifiers, you can see here listed rock texture. And if I click the final button, it will jump us down to our texture tab, where again, this is visible. And um, we're going to just change the type. All right, we're going to move it to we're going to move to Verona, and uh, we'll keep it on actual distance. Um, and let's change the coloring from intensity to position and outline. You can see it gives us this really nice kind of cell shaded pattern. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is let's change our intensity to something like maybe let's go, let's go up a little ways because I'm going to. I'm going to try something. We're going to go up to 2.9, let's say, and then let's take our size. Let's leave our size at, at 0.1. Let's just see what we can do with this. All right. So now if we've got everything selected again, move it around, you see it's just out of control, right? Um, and this could be cool if this is kind of the thing we're going for, but uh, we don't want to lose our spire shape so much. 
So I'm going to go to my first displacement and I'm going to reduce the strength because right now it's that's really, you know, what's causing everything to be so uh, taken taken over, I guess, by this, this noise generator. I'm going to take this strength. And I'm going to drop it all the way down to point two. Yeah, cool. So you can see we start to get the shape back. Go all the way to point one. Might play with those numbers a little bit. And uh, this one as well, we're going to take this one down to, uh, let's go to maybe 0 0.03. See how that, yeah, that's cool. All right, so it's way more subtle. Now we've got them all selected still. So if I move it around, you can see that we're we're way more consistent now. We're getting interesting shapes. All of them look appropriate. Um, if I rotate it around, um, it's really kind of working out well for us. Now, one other thing we can do to kind of get even more interest in this shape, and this kind of depends on the speed of your computer, how much you can handle. If we go to the first subdivision surface modifier that we have on our object and we turn that up to three, it's really gonna start affecting things in quite a dramatic way. You can see my computer chugs a little bit um, when I do that. And that's because of course, our faces are jumping up to 25,000. Whereas right now they're only at 6,000. So it's a significant jump to increase our um, overall faces at this beginning point with the subdivision surface. So you may not wanna do this. This might be something you wanna save just for render, but be careful because as you can see, the difference between two and three is actually very significant. So you don't want to set up your scene and then have a look at it and realize, oh, actually, this looks this is looking good. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try I'm gonna turn down my strength down here maybe to 0.01, and uh, actually I may even just turn it off. No, we definitely need it. You can see it's adding just a little bit of organic life. Um, 0.02, yeah, that's that's not bad. And um, I'm also gonna back off my. Um, my simple uh, deform tool. So right now the angle is 78.7. I'm gonna just pull that right back. So it's not so pronounced. Now, um, the next thing I wanna do is play around with the rock start and rock in just a little bit more. I'm gonna grab rock start and hit G and Z and just see what happens if I move it around. Okay, I like it kind of up a little bit. Like it's sort of the rock is formed here and then it's sort of emerging. I'm gonna change the scale, see what we can get. Um, and these are being things that we can play with with all the different uh, spires. We'll just adjust the, the rock end and uh, the rock start to kind of get different different looks. Um, now I'm just playing with scale and position again just to kind of get a sense of what it does for us. Um, and that's kind of cool. Let's just have another look at how it changes as we move through the scene. So yeah, that's great. So that's going to give us a lot of good variety. All right. Now the next thing we want to do is um, we're going to parent, put these two guys in underneath um, our rock spire so that whenever we move the rock spire, these stay with it. So let's let's go and do that. We'll select the first two, the, the two nulls, and then we're going to select the rock spire geometry itself. And then we're going to hit control P to bring up the parent menu and we're going to parent to the object. So when parenting, it's always the last object you select. So if we shift select a bunch of stuff, the last one that we select, so in this case was the plane, if we hit control P, everything's gonna parent under the plane. Now, if we grab rock spire, uh, it's gonna take the nulls with us. So we're not gonna lose um, you know, the, the position of our rock start and rock end, which is, which is great, really important. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're not gonna be using Eevee for these renders, so we can get rid of our reflection cube maps and our uh, iridescence volume, turn those off. And uh, we also, we don't need our plane anymore. So let's turn that off. And we don't need our sphere. So we're just cleaning up our scene. We'll keep our two lights for now. I'm not sure how they're gonna affect, affect the way things look, but let's take, um, let's go ahead and create a camera so we can begin to set up our scene. So I'm gonna hit uh, Shift A and go down to camera. And then I'm gonna hit the zero key on the number pad or you can hit, um, oh yeah, we have to turn on our gizmos again. We've, turn those off. So don't forget to bring that back on if you've had that off. If you click on the camera icon, that's going to actually put us inside the camera. So it's either zero on the number pad on your keyboard or it's this button. Now, if we um, bring out this little hidden menu here, um, which you can always drag until it disappears, or you can hit the in key to bring it out if your mouse is over the viewport. Okay. And there's also the T key, which brings out this side. So these are the two kind of side menus. A lot of things have these, like you can accidentally um, cause your these guys to disappear. Like if you if you grab, let's see how do you do, there you go. So you see how they've disappeared. You might freak out if that ever happens to you. 
But um, that little button there, you can see that little arrow. Just look out for those. They're, it's very subtle, um, a little tricky to remember, but once you get in the habit of it, um, you, you won't have a hard time. So we're gonna drop out properties here um, and make sure our camera selected. Oh no, sorry, not properties. We're gonna go into these tabs uh, to view. And view lock, underneath that, you see lock camera to view. We're gonna tick that. So now whenever we move our viewport, it's actually gonna keep the camera um, locked into place. I'll just switch to look dev view there accidentally. Switch back to solid. So let's uh, let's position our camera uh, somewhere here in the scene. Um, I'm gonna do it kind of straight down the middle. So um, under my uh, object properties tab, let's change the position on the X to zero. Change our rotation, we'll just zero out. Zero out the rotation to 90 and then Z will rotate around. Where's our scene? There it is. So just go 360, no, uh, 180. That's what I need. Math <laughs> gets you every time. Okay, let's uh, change our camera settings. So perspective is good. We can also switch this to orthographic if you're doing an orthographic scene. Uh, let's change our focal length to something like maybe 25. And uh, yeah, that's cool. All right, now I'm gonna turn off lock camera to view. And now if I zoom in, you see um, it doesn't change, doesn't move the camera, but actually just increases how closely we're looking uh, through the camera. So that's really helpful. Now, the next thing we can do is we can uh, change, sort of help us focus in on our scene by darkening everything that's on the outside. And that's gonna be under viewport display under our cameras tab. And right here, uh, pass per two, pass par two, pass par, I mean, it looks like French, pass par two, no idea. Anyways, uh, we're gonna increase that up to one. Now we can't see anything that's on the outside, which is cool. You can always bring that down too if you wanted to see what else is in your scene, but I find it's helpful just for reducing down to what we're looking at. Uh, what we can also do is um, hit control B and just select our viewport there, and that'll also just limit what we're rendering. So if we you know, switch to rendered view, it's just gonna render what's in here. All right, things are looking cool. Now, if I, uh, if I move my view, it's gonna snap us automatically out of the camera. We can come back around and have a look at our object. Um, yeah. So let's, uh, let's take a look at what we can do with this texture. Um, I just wanna add in a few more things and kind of now that we've sort of changed the shape of it, you can see that our material is going to it's going to affect it in sort of different ways. And one of the things I'm concerned about is that you know, this pattern that we have here, we've got the red, um, it's going to get really repetitive. Also, if you zoom back, it kind of I mean, it blends together. It just it just looks like a an object, like an outline of a shape with this pattern on it. So I don't feel like we're really bringing out the shape of our object through our um, our material. So we're just going to make a few tweaks and just add in some stuff that's going to help define it a little bit more. Okay, to work on this material so that we can see it really clearly, I wanna, I'm gonna duplicate it and have two of these. So um, now one thing to look out for, if I click on Rock Spire and hit Shift D and duplicate it, you're gonna see it didn't duplicate Rock End, Rock Start, and it just, just duplicated the Rock Spire itself. So this is actually still linked to these um, and it's, it's no longer being affected by them unless it you know, comes into contact with them like this, which that's not what we want. So what we can do is, uh, what we want to do is select the object and then also select the nulls themselves. Once we've got everything selected, hit Shift D. Now it'll duplicate and uh, it'll automatically associate these new nulls with the modifier within the object. So that's good news. That's what we want to do. So we can rotate this one around on the Z axis. Let's bring it like that. Grab it down the X maybe. You might scale this one up a touch, down maybe. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe create um, move this one back and move this one forward. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and then I'm also going to let's zoom out. I'm going to affect these guys a little bit like that, maybe. So there's some solid variation in what we're looking at. Yeah, cool. All right, let's set up our view now. And let's uh, let's make room again uh, for our shader view. 
shader network graph and let's uh, turn off gizmos. Let's drop that out of the way and let's uh, bring up our texture again by selecting one of these objects. Okay, now remember both these are using the same material um, and let's hit rendered. Now, what I wanna do first is um, we're gonna create one more noise pattern that's gonna be working on the, uh, the emission part of our shader. So let's, let's come over here into our graph and we're gonna create, um, let's create a, a Veroni and a Musgrave and a noise. And let's uh, go ahead and get our emission shader set up so we can just view what's going on. So I'll pop that into surface and let's start taking a look. All right, we're gonna start with our Veroni texture. Now, I want to affect this, um, and let's let's change these, these settings. Let's go with Manhattan, and instead of closest, I wanna go to Crackle, which gives you this really nice, kind of cool pattern. I could have used this for cracks even, it looks nice. So uh, let's, let's change our scale. Um, let's bring it right up. Let's go to something like 30, uh, that's cool. And then let's put a color ramp on this guy. So let's go uh, type in color ramp, drop it in. And let's, let's take the black and just bring it up a touch Something like that. That's cool. All right, I'm gonna move this up to the top. Okay, so what we're doing is we're gonna use this pattern to create some more really cool glowy things. Almost like um, this like cell, um, cell pattern, um, like inner honeycomb glow thing. I don't know, I just like it. It looks like a, it looks really alien to me and I like seeing it glow red, it looks nice. But what we're gonna do is we don't want it to uniformly do it all over the whole thing. We just kinda of wanna selectively allow this through in certain areas. So we're gonna use the Musgrave to isolate it. So you can see the Musgrave gives us this really nice black and white kind of solid pattern. We're gonna use this to kind of, you know, cut away bits of this Veronite texture where we don't want it and just allow it to come through in other areas where we do want it. So uh, let's, let's get that set up. So um, we're gonna go with FBM's fine. Let's, let's try a really small scale, something like, like 1.9. Maybe two. We'll start with 1.9. See how that goes, and let's let's multiply that with this. So let's go um, mix RGB. Bring the color of our color ramp and the factor of our Musgrave, and we're going to pipe this into our emission. And we're going to switch this to multiply because we want the black to knock out the, um, the our Veronite texture. And I'm gonna increase it all the way up to one. So we're fully taking advantage of whatever this is generating. So you can see now that's really isolating uh, sections um, where we're not having this texture and then other areas where we are. All right, so we're gonna duplicate this Musgrave texture and uh, I'll just switch the type and let's just find one that looks um, different. So the Terra terrain is not very different. Multifractal is going to be too bright. Ridge multifractal, that's cool. That's quite different to this one. All right, let's try this. We'll try multi, ridge multifractal. And we're going to duplicate the multiply and we're going to put this one into the top and this one into the bottom. And we're going to have a look at what that's doing. All right. So, okay, yeah, cool. So it's just it's just cutting it off even more. Um, creating some more variation. If we just change our scale, um, we can see how that's gonna affect things. That's kind of nice. I might try keeping it at that. I'll go back over here and play with my scale again. Um, this is the one that's really gonna cut it out. Um, okay. Yeah, it looks like 1.9 is, is kind of a nice place to settle. Uh, then we can also take the Rona texture and like change the scale of, of that as well to get a different look. But we might, let's keep it at 30 for now and then see how it looks when we start to, to mix it in with everything. I'm gonna add one other thing. So we can use this noise um, generator. So if we have a look at what that is, um, 
Noise has this really great effect called distortion. So I'm going to bring my scale way up. Let's go to like, I don't know, 144, 145, something like that. And then let's take our distortion and we are going to pop that up to like uh, five, something like that. Here, I'll bring this down so you can see what it's doing. There we go. So you can see when you add in distortion, it just starts to like create this marbleized effect, which is just really nice. Let's keep this one as is and let's go ahead and add another multiply in. I'm going to turn clamp on as well, uh, just to make sure we don't get any super values. Um, higher than one or less than zero, and that can just create some weird effects if we're not expecting it. All right, now let's see, what is this doing for us? Yeah, cool. So if I zoom in here, you can see in the the cell bit where we're getting, we're getting this thing um, affecting the look. I might drop it down even further so we've got that kind of nice, nice look there. Yeah, that's really cool. All right. Looking good. I'll put clamp on for this one too, just in case. Um, all right, so I want to take this and um, we're gonna we're gonna pop this through a um, we're gonna pop this through a color ramp. That's gonna give us the control we want. So color ramp right here, and I'll just bring the black up a touch. Bring the white down, maybe. Yeah, cool. So you can see now what it's doing. It's going to be these nice kind of harsh air areas where we're going to have this cool alien cell pattern shining through. Um, and then of course this will change as we you know, move our objects through space. It's going to hit it in different ways, which is really cool. Now, one thing I just noticed uh, if I move this guy, you can see our uh, texture kind of walked out on us. It, uh, it changed great deal there. Uh, let's let's bring in our, let's try and fix that. Let's bring our texture coordinate. I'm going to duplicate that, bring that up. And we're going to pipe this through to the vector of each of these. There we go. That's all of them. Yep. Now let's jump in here and let's see what happens if we've changed the from generated to object. Yeah, cool. And then let's change our scale. Is that going to be good? Let's see what it's looking like. Try point 0.2. There we go. All right, that's looking closer to what we had. Might even try point 0.3. So the difference between generated and object, you can see it's um, generated seems to be affected by all the modifiers because it's stretching out across. So generated is, is being generated from, uh, potentially from the base object that we've got, our base cube. Um, we could probably verify that. Um, and again, I actually don't know. So let's just find out. If we go generated vector and vector and then make that one, 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 one. And then we hit, all right, yeah. So you can see it's working well on the object, but when I apply all of our modifiers, it really stretches it out. So generated isn't actually, it's not happening at the end of our modifier stack. It's happening at the beginning, which is not what we want. Um, and I don't believe we have settings in these to affect the UV space. There might be something, but um, if you know about it, let me know in the comments. Um, but uh, object, <clears throat> if we switch back to this one, it's going to be looking at the object itself after all of our modifiers. That's how I understand it. So yeah, let me know if I'm wrong, if you've, if you've got a better idea of how this is working. Um, but let's have a look at what these different things can do for us. Um, yeah, nice. Okay. All right, next up, let's uh, let's take this and um, let's feed it into, let's go ahead and mix it with our emission system. So if I just go back, I'll actually be interested to see how changing this has affected this, but it doesn't seem to have affected it too much. Um, okay, so we want to we want to combine this uh, with our with our color ramp, but I also want to change kind of the way we're setting it right, uh, setting up our our emission system. So right now. 
we're piping this red color and this black color into the emission color and then we're coming here and we're mixing the shader by a factor and basically it means that it's it's like mixing this entire emission shader on top of our previous shader and the fact that we've got a black emission means that there's going to be everything that's black here we're actually dulling our original texture we don't want to do that um, so what we want to do is unplug that and we're going to make our emission color red and um, and it's the factor that we want to actually affect with what we were originally using to control the color. If I just change this to white, so we're working with just a black and white gradient, um, go into the RGB and then just type one into each of the values, it'll turn to white. If we go color and then pipe that to factor and just swap these around, there we go. Now what it's doing is it's, it's no longer kind of overriding our main material. It's only showing the emission where we want, where we want it, which is in these red areas. So um, it's a subtle effect. You probably weren't noticing any difference, but it's going to be helpful in the long term if we do things that way. So just kind of the, the proper setup. Okay, let's go ahead and mix this in. Um, so let's take the, uh, so we're going to do this. Let's try, let's go mix RGB. Bring the uh, color of our first setup for our emission. And let's bring the color of our second there and pipe that to the factor and immediately you'll see our new object pop in but now we're just mixing it right we want to um, actually combine them somehow so let's go to let's try add all right so we can kind of see the two at work i might flip them around so we're kind of bringing on the cells all right uh, and i might also just back off our our other emission. Now the next thing I'm going to do is get rid of this. So we've got this this texture that's creating this sort of underwater ripple look on our thing. This is actually coming from our our color. Um, we can see if I drag this in a little bit, it starts to go away. Um, and maybe that's all we need is just to reduce it a bit so that it's more of a, a subtle effect. Let's do let's do two things. Let's add let's add our uh, this the cell shape into our bump map okay so we'll grab a uh, mix rgb put that there and we're gonna have to zoom all the way out and find it which is all the way up here and drag it right down to that there we go and i'm gonna increase it all up to one and i will go to let's try multiply let's see if that's doing what we want get right in on it and let me if i just turn off the emission Yeah, add is what we want. So you can see we're getting the cell pattern that's affecting our overall bump. So that's how we can track that down. I might even bring our strength up on our bump. Okay, we can bring our emission back in. So bring that back to our factor. I might just see what it looks like. Let's let's drop down the size of our Veroni or increase the scale, I mean, of the Veroni pattern. Yeah, that's a little cooler, a little bit more of a subtle thing. All right, next thing I want to try is um, just a little bit more with our um, ambient occlusion shader. So let's let's grab one of those again. Sorry, not a, not a shader, but um, node and a color ramp, and we'll pipe the AO into the factor. And there's our emission shader. There it is. Unhook that. Plug that in and grab the emission into the surface. And now let's just crank this up. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so my idea with this is that um, we can use this to drive some of our some of our color operations. So let's uh let's have a look i'll um pipe this back in pipe our main shader back into the surface 
and I'll unplug that and let's select these two and hit the G key and let's grab them and bring them right over here. And instead of using the factor that we've been using for this, this color, um, um, this, this, this red sort of snaky color, let's see what happens if we use this instead. All right, so that's interesting. So now it's actually kind of using the geometry of the object. Um, the dark areas are coming through as the black color and the other areas are coming through as this bright red. Let's bring that red right down and maybe back it off its saturation. Stick uh, a color ramp here in between our musgrave so I can clamp down um, and get rid of the faded kind of edge. All right, so we are going to wrap things up here, and uh, the next tutorial we're going to begin to position everything in our scene. So I thought maybe we'd get to that in this one, but we haven't quite hit it, but that's all right. We're making good progress. So um, yeah, stay tuned. Next time we're gonna just begin to take all these different rock elements we've created, use this material across a, a wide range of shapes and uh, begin to fill out our landscape and really make this, uh, this scene come to life. So I hope you're excited. I hope you learned some cool stuff in this tutorial and uh, feel free to like and subscribe to keep following along. So we will see you in the next one. Woo!